Hello, welcome to Networking Field Day 14. We are here at the offices of Big Switch Networks. The presentation that you're about to see is attended by a group of invited delegates who represent the best and brightest minds in the networking industry. They will be offering comments, discussion, and their views on the technology of the company that you're about to see. If you'd like more information about this and other events, please go to our website at techfieldday.com or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Hi everyone, <clears throat> my name is Rich Groves. I'm principal architect at A10 Networks. Uh, I focus there on the threat protection system, which is our DDoS mitigation product. Uh, but I have to say that uh, Big Tap um, itself is actually very close to my heart and it's, it's, it's really very cool uh, to be able to come up with uh, even more you know, solutions focused stuff uh, for this technology than just uh, Big Tap, and hopefully we can talk to you about Big Secure and how that, that's going to help. So uh, before I give you this background, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, I, I see, I see um, uh, the Big Secure architecture in two different ways, you know, useful for me, not just as a user, uh, but at A10 Networks. So, First of all, you know, it's very interesting, of course, the primary use case being at the DMZ, filtering some stuff uh, that, that needs to uh, get filtered at the edge, pulling traffic back toward other services and tools to be able to analyze the traffic, right? Um, that, that's one. For me, uh, it's important to, uh, to build solutions for the customer also uh, that help them just keep their network up, right? Not, not just not just filtering DDoS and, and doing this security related uh, work, but also introducing services to do caching and other sorts of things that actually take care of the availability problem, not just the DDoS mitigation problem. Uh, okay, so a little bit of background. Uh, we do a lot of DDoS mitigation. I get to see a lot of weird stuff in the industry. One of them, uh, which is pretty high profile, is Mirai, right, uh, which is recent. Um, it's taken. It's it's capable of generating a lot of attack traffic, and really the 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 uh, the attention has been more uh, for Mirai has been more uh, focused on the fact that it's an IoT based botnet, uh, and sort of less uh, people have gone less into the fact that it's really just sort of an attack toolkit. Uh, and so my focus, at least in this talk, is is more around. Uh, the repertoire of, of, uh, of Mirai uh, to bring down your network and how we're going to help with A10 and Big Secure. Um, so, as I said, you know, terabits of traffic, um, it's been effective uh, because of the fact that it has this big repertoire, TCP, UDP, HTTP, DNS, uh, GRE, a lot of focus on amplification, some focus on spoofing, uh, but the real scary bit for me as a vendor um, is not just the fact that it's a spoofing, uh, uh, that, that it's got this, you know, spoofing-based stuff uh, in, in the code, um, but also uh, that we, uh, that it has the ability to source traffic uh, from a real stack and look like a real user. Uh, so it makes life really hard uh, for vendors. We have a good solution, uh, but it still makes it more challenging. And for this reason, uh, having a good scale-out solution, something that is automated uh, and, and talks to actually the, the switch fabric, as you'll see, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so I think many of you are familiar with what Big Switch does. Clearly, you know, Kyle went over it. Um, I'm drawing, this is more of a logical diagram than an actual network diagram here. Uh, my ideal use case, I think, as a, uh, as a user, if I put my user hat back on, uh, is having the ability to do as much high volume amplification filtering at the edge um, as I possibly can. And this sort of feeds into uh, the, uh, the big chain uh, uh, DMZ kind of filtering, right? Uh, Really scalable here versus uh, some of the horror stories that you see with, um, even though it's growing up, you know, flow spec, big flow spec collapses in, in the internet um, based on uh, attempts to do 
uh, uh, sort of PBR-like rules like we're doing you know, here, just abstracted from the end user. Uh, then the next layer in this big secure architecture, which with the DDoS focus for A10, is really this multi-vector attack mitigation. So once I take away uh, the need to scale out just for amplification filtering, I need a, a layer that is capable of doing things like understanding whether something is spoofed or not spoofed, uh, understanding if not just at L3, um, L4, and some L7 sort of challenges that have to happen. Right to make sure that someone is a real user before I start doing any uh, any further filtering. And finally, uh, being able to to utilize a rich suite of protocol parsers to figure out what is uh, malformed uh, malformed protocol, uh, uh, pa uh, malformed packet, malformed protocol inside of the packet, etc., um, is pretty important for protecting the system. We can't really do this without an interface to the network to be able to block um, as much as we can at the edge, pull traffic that we're interested in um, toward detection systems, uh, and then uh, add a chain for uh, the more complex mitigation that has to happen. And that's what we're going to show here uh, in this demo. So, uh, and I'll, I'll let Ted go into this a little bit um, deeper, but just as a very brief overview. Uh, I have Thunder TPS uh, as a detector here actually consuming a stream of traffic. Um, here it's mirrored traffic, but it's really sort of surgical mirroring, meaning that um, since I can do flow-based mirroring on these switches with uh, Big Mom, then um, I can see exactly the indicators that I'm looking for. Um, in the scenario, and I think I just said that, oh yeah, creating uh, baselines um, of these indicators is what we're doing here. Uh, when we detect an attack, we're able to then signal the API of the Big Mon controller to instantiate all of these, uh, all of these uh, chains that you're going to see demonstrated. Um, and then finally, getting vThunder TPS on the SXI platform um, in line um, at that point whenever the attack is detected uh, to do its more complicated uh, filtering is really important. Um, I, I just want to stress the fact that uh, having a scale out for this sort of uh, functionality that you see with TPS in line um, is, is important not just for uh, uh, making your mitigation, you know, uh, targeted at your actual need instead of over purchasing, maybe, um, but um, but 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 also you know at that point you get exactly what you pay for and what you need at any one point in time. So, <clears throat> can you explain to me? Uh, maybe it's later in the presentation. Yeah, no if problem. that's the case, that's fine. Um, you mentioned that uh, the Big Mom fabric is essentially surgically sending you data. Mm -hmm. um, Kind of preemptively, right? Be before an attack is detected. That's right. That's how right. do you tell the fabric what what gets sent and how does that get defined? Actually, I think Ted's going to show that to you. Okay, but it's okay. a great question. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hand over to Ted, um, and we're going to go through the actual demo, which I'm really excited about. So, Ted. So first to start, uh, just to remind you quickly, Big Mon Inline is a service chaining, SDN style service chaining uh, system that allows you to service chain your tools between your production devices. And that all of that is done transparently. So the same traffic that you send in on, think of it as a L1, L1 wire, over which you service chain your tools will be received at the other end, transparently. Now what you're looking at here on this is a typical deployment of Bigmon inline with a pair of HA inline switches right in the middle that are managed by the Bigmon controller. And by the way, this is the same controller that is managing our out of band, uh, you know, open network switches for, you know, to act as a next generation NPB. And so this Bigmon controller managing these inline switches right in the middle 
is typically connected to your edge router at one end, and at another end, it's connected to your internal trusted routers where you connect your, you know, the rest of your data center. And we have DNS servers right here on the trusted side. We also have out of band traffic that we send out, uh, and we'll go answer your question in a little bit uh, by going to the actual controller and taking a look at how we do that. So we have out of band span traffic that we send out, and we have inline tools that we insert in that chain. Now for the demo, what we will start with, we will have DNS requests that are valid requests coming in. You know, your typical request for an A record, okay? The requests will come through to the inline chain, and we have the configuration, we'll show you how we'll do the configuration to send, to span that traffic to the out of band tool that will do the detection. The traffic will continue to your DNS servers from there. Now this is valid traffic, nothing happens, there are no alerts that will be triggered on the out of band, you know, Thunder TPS. After that, we'll send attack-like traffic. And that traffic really consists of malformed DNS requests, DNS requests without a payload, coming at a higher rate than the baseline that you have configured in your out-of-band TPS. Okay, makes sense? So what you're saying is you set a filter in big security fabric, monitoring DNS traffic at a certain threshold, some sort of rate threshold? So we, we have, I'll get to that in a second, yeah. but what we do, we spend the traffic that's coming in on the inline switch and yep. send it to the out of band tool. Right. Okay. Selectively. We don't send the entire traffic that we're seeing. We select what the tool is concerned with. <coughs> so if, if the tool is supposed to detect certain types of attack, we send it that sort of traffic mm -hmm. that possibly can contain attacks or can, you know, carry an attack. So the switch is doing some of the detection, or it's a uh, Thunder, AT, uh, 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 an A10 V Thunder? The switch is not doing the detection. The right. switch is redirecting. The switch, as Rich earlier said, can do some level of mitigation, yep. uh, especially for uh, reflection attacks, yep. right, uh, based on L2 to L4 parameters. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess, so my question is, is, is it, the switch that has some policy information about which traffic to send out of band? Or sure, I'm getting to that in a second. Okay, okay. one second. Okay, yeah. And when you get there, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to answer it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's controlling that? Is, is it the A10 dictating to the to monitoring fabric what it wants, or is it the monitoring fabric sending what it believes independently to the, to the A10 to, to verify? So oh. who's, who's the brains? Who's making the decision about what actually gets sent selectively? I'm just curious. Sure, yeah. we'll get there. Um, so the attack traffic comes in, and now the out-of-band TPS will alert our big mall controller by invoking the API and telling it, look, there is this UDP traffic coming at a high rate, and I suspect there is an attack. There are missing you know, payloads in this attack. It looks like an attack right, in this traffic. So the big mall controller reprograms the inline switch, this time to send the traffic to the VTPS inline box. Okay. So remember, the traffic is still going to the out of band, but also we're sending the traffic in line through the VTPS, which is really a, we can think of it as a VNF, virtual network function, built on top of a x86 server. Okay. And does the mitigation for you, and you end up with the valid traffic coming through only. Okay. So before, uh, without like staying too much on these slides, let me head quickly to uh, the controller show you how it's configured. So what you're looking at here is the logical chain on the right. It has two endpoints. Endpoint one is connected to your edge router. And endpoint two is connected to your internal routers. Okay. Right now, there are no services inserted on that chain. Okay. So what I will do is I'll go ahead and insert an out-of-band service to send the traffic that is coming on endpoint one to the out-of-band box, TPS, you know, Thunder TPS. Okay. 
now it's part of that chain. Anything that comes in, the ingress traffic, incoming traffic on endpoint one will be sent out of band to TPS for detection purposes. And it's copied, right? It's copied. Span traffic, yeah. So if I go back, if I go to that TPS detection span service and edit it, I will look at the rules and I can see that there is, I'm filtering specifically only the UDP traffic. Okay, so I'm not sending the entire traffic that I'm seeing on endpoint one, just UDP traffic. And not just DNS sorry, traffic. But this is not, not just DNS, the entire all UDP, UDP traffic. Because okay. multiple, you know, multi-factor attacks over UDP could take place and the out-of-band box could handle all of these attacks or detect these attacks. Okay. okay. So you could obviously constrain this to, narrow this further to port mm -hmm. 53 DNS traffic if, mm -hmm. if you f see there is a need to do that. Okay. Yeah. I want to, I want to increase okay. Okay. That's probably better. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to make any changes here. Um, and now what's left is to insert the inline service. Now I'm going to insert the inline service. Oh, before I have to answer your question. Who decides on what traffic to send? That's really a design decision. I know what my out of band box does and what's supposed to detect, what kind of attacks it's supposed to detect. So based on that knowledge, I can decide, oh, I need this sort of traffic to be sent, and only that traffic. That's Wait, but you're configuring that in the fabric. I'm configuring that in the, on the inline switch. That's true. Okay. I do the controller. Just wanted, yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to know. Is, is, okay. is A10 influencing the fabric, or you know, is the outside device inf influencing the fabric to send the traffic that it wants? Or are you having to kind of define what you would consider an attack and what that device does on the fabric itself and then forward the traffic accordingly? Sure. So it's configure on the fabric, push the traffic to the appropriate device. Exactly. Okay. Right. So you and mentioned. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned that um, in this instance we're looking at uh, it was like UDP DNS traffic. Mm -hmm. So can you layer that type of what you're sending over to A10 um, because DDoS attacks come in different forms and shapes, right? So we're obviously going to have to build that out a little bit more than just DNS, you know, wh however it comes. So can you layer what you're sending over to A10? Definitely. So you could have any number of rules to you know, select the specific traffic for, you know, you suspect can carry an attack vector on it. Uh, you can also even scale that DPS detection uh, have it in a setup with scale out architecture so that it can handle as much traffic as you expect to get on right. you know, the incoming traffic, the edge routers. And then you mentioned baselines, right? So yeah. you're baselining you know, what DNS traffic is, you know, what's normal and what's, what's, the normal? what's, mm -hmm. what's above average. So can you baseline traffic as a whole? So say you don't have you know, Jules, just take the DNS example. Say you don't have DNS built to be sent over to A10. Can we, is there a secret sauce where we start sending that data over without actually having someone in the interface configuring that? So that's uh, probably more of a question for Rich. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, we have, we have a lot of functionality for either you know, baselining just all the traffic in general or specifics, you know, if you know what services that you're trying to protect or uh, look at, right? right. Um, and I think in, in a future iteration of this integration, uh, we'll want to definitely have, have whatever the uh, TPS itself needs to see. Um, be requested from the fabric, you know, because I think that the important part is is having this tool or this service um, abstracted from the topology, you know, and just say this is what I'm looking for. Right. right. So yeah. one other question came in from uh, Phil Gervais uh, out out east. He's wondering what kind of intelligence the TPS has built in, baked in out of the box versus what you what you define. Are there existing baseline rules, or do you pretty much have to build them yourself? Uh, you you have to take in general. You take a period of time for uh, learning what peace time looks like before okay. you know what attack time looks like. So it's more uh, discovery rather than a built-in. Yeah, thing. yeah. Now, with that in mind, we, we have some interesting autonomous methods that we've put together uh, to understand, you know, discover what it is you're trying to protect and the uh, uh, rates that that you know that that are that are uh, 
expected at peacetime before, um, before we learn anything. So there's like this out of the box mechanism and then we get more fine grain as we learn more. So it find out what is normal for your environment and yeah. then proceed from there. Okay, yeah. that makes sense, thank you. Yep. I've got a little more, just a general question. Um, as far as multi-tenancy, if I'm a multi-tenant data center operator, is there a solution for the big secure architecture to be multi-tenant and you know offer that downstream? And if not, is is that in the works? Is that on the roadmap? Um, so you could have multiple deployments of big one in line, uh -huh. uh, separate deployments that handle different endpoints in your data center, and uh, you could definitely have separate management for these different deployments. It can be done throughout the same interface, management interface. Okay, so I could isolate it into different multi-tenant instances through that, in that fashion. You could definitely do that. Okay. So now we have the out-of-band tool inserted. What is missing is the inline tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the inline tool. And remember, I did insert the inline tool, but that doesn't mean that it's getting any traffic yet, right? So I can quickly go check and see what rule is there for sending traffic. You see there we have only NTP traffic being sent. There is no DNS traffic forwarded to the inline VTP. <coughs> okay. So if I go to A10 now, the out of band box, and look at the traffic, I see that there is about 100, 100 you know, packets per second coming in on the out-of-band box, okay? That's roughly seven kilo, kilobytes per second worth of traffic. And on the inline switch, I'm sorry, on the inline box, BTPS box, there's zero traffic. We're not sending anything, okay? So what I, what I will do right now, I'm gonna go and start an attack, launch a DNS attack. Those are the packets without payloads in them that are coming at a high rate. On the right hand side, this is the DNS server. And you can see here it's receiving traffic at about seven kilobytes per second. Okay. So a lot more traffic is coming in on the server. This is the attack traffic. And all of a sudden, within three seconds, something happened. I'm back to the normal, my normal traffic. So it took about three seconds for the system to react and filter out all of these attack uh, packets coming in, DNS packets that didn't have the payload in them. Okay. So I think this is cool. I don't know if you agree. Yeah. So if I go now and, um, you know, so what happened really is I. Uh, you know, reacted to the attack, I reprogrammed my fabric, I redirected the traffic to the mitigator, the mitigator got rid of the attack traffic and sent through just the valid packets. And this is really nice, so one thing I can do is go and double check what actually happened. This is what I think happened, but in reality, did this actually happen? So I can go back to my big mon controller and take a look <coughs> at the rules for the inline box. And as you can see, an entry has been added, UDP port 53, specifically for that server that we are protecting. So 10.10.9.98, okay? And if I go back and visit my out-of-band box, you see here there was this peak. This is the attack traffic coming in. On the inline A10 TPS, you can see that there's, there was a majority of traffic that has been dropped, right? And if I look at just packet drop, this is the top rate that I reached for the attack. And if I click back on past, now I'm back at my normal rate okay, of about 100 packets per second. Does, does it tell it to send um, all UDP traffic to the to the um, inline one or just the possible attack traffic? So right, right now it's sending the entire UDP traffic because the inline switch cannot look into the payload. So it cannot tell whether it's a valid 
payload. All it can say, okay, my out of band A10 box is saying there's something wrong with UDP for mm -hmm. 53 traffic. Mm -hmm. I redirect that traffic to the inline BTPS, and this is where you know more narrow, uh, more uh, deeper analysis is done on the traffic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's specifically UDP 53, not <coughs> UDP <coughs> all ports. Oh. Yes, right. just oh. UDP 53, okay. and not only that, actually, okay. traffic going to that server that we're protecting. Okay. Ah, so you're, I mean, you're, you're, getting the, you're getting that granular. Yeah, something we have to keep in mind, we want to protect our services. We want our services to keep running, right? We don't want our DNS servers to be down, and this is what the goal is. So to just look at traffic for that service that we're protecting. So it's that crazy service fast service. Okay. mean time to mitigation. Like it, it's, uh, if, if you've ever taken a look in the rest of the industry, uh, to see how fast, you know, normally we go from detection to mitigation to event being over. It, 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 it normally spans in, in minutes, right? And I actually, I have no idea how fast that was, but it was in uh, seconds for sure. Three seconds? Yeah, so, right, exactly, yeah. right. So. <laughs> so I'm just curious, and you guys may be getting to this later, but is RTBH one of the, uh, in your mitigation solutions? Pardon? Or RTBH for BGP, remotely triggered black holes we, in BGP, is that in somewhere in there? In we, de we definitely have RTBH okay. as, as a feature. So one could imagine a scenario when the detector sitting off of uh, uh, big secure architecture, you know, detects something and has a, a peering to to drop stuff. Yeah, like some systems I heard it described, we're going to put this in the penalty box for 30 minutes and then we'll let it go and see if it's okay. How does that, how does the timing of all that work? If you're going to block something, is it blocked forever until an administrator comes back and says, I want that to go, or are there dynamic rules you, you craft around that? How does that work? From the, from the BGP uh, perspective, it's, it's more about, um, at present, it's more about timing. Mm -hmm. um, so actually setting timers and then watching the traffic that comes in. Uh, in, in the future, we'll have more creative ways to accomplish gotcha. So you that. give it a chance to behave, check in if it's still misbehaving, it goes back in the, yeah, back in right. the box. That's right. I think you said earlier this is a layer one service chaining approach mm -hmm. and that the inline devices were VMs on ESX. That's true. That's true. The, the inline, in that demo that we showed you, the inline VTPS, yeah. under VTPS, is running as a VM on ESXi. So what kind of games did you have to play to, is there is there an end cap to deliver the traffic to the VM or? No, so it, VTPS does support this model. Uh, all we have to do really is to use two uplinks on the server and uh, use virtual switches, uh, standard virtual switch on ESX. But isn't the, isn't the, the, the frame that you're misdirecting the, destined for the DNS server's MAC address and why would the well, vSwitch the, cooperate? And the, the, VT, uh, the virtual switch is configured in Promiscuous mode. Okay. And it's, so it's acting really like a, like a yeah. bridge. In it, so forge transmit is enabled and promiscuous is turned on. And exactly. I see. Yeah. Both on the incoming side and on the outgoing side. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's remapping from the in, in the big mon, correct? From it's signaling A10 signaling the, the, the fabric to switch the traffic over to the uh, to the virtual cluster. That's true. Right. That's right. right. We're essentially using grammar that that, that tells the big mon uh, API. We see this attack, it's an attack of this type, and we think that the, uh, the mitigator needs to be pulled you know, in, into play for that. So if this is a, a virtual instance of the mitigation system and it's a real sustained DDoS attack, what's the chain to spin up more instances if you need to actually start processing more packets? So you're asking a very great question, and this is something we, did touch, we didn't touch on, but the whole goal here really is to have uh, mitigation at scale and you know uh, because we're using an SDN style fabric service chaining in this case we have the ability to measure rates on links and uh, you know through APIs get things like CPU and memory utilization on the inline uh, VTPS and based on that we could instantiate more uh, additional VMs on different servers I guess my question is, is it the controller that's watching the inline mitigation system to say, looks like we might need to spin up some more instances here, or is the instance, is the, is there some system on the instances itself saying we need more help here? How does that, who's making that decision? So this is 
uh, more of a you know early demo of the system. Uh, there are several possible architectural decisions that could be you know we could take. Uh, definitely, the big one controller can be the device that makes these decisions, mm. or it could be just a third party device, or even uh, yeah, we, the eight end device. Yeah, that's right. And, and we have a uh, management system of our own um, at eight ten that could signal big mon to to to. Uh, to scale out even further, you know, across VMs, and then we could instantiate. Them. So there, there are a lot, there's a lot of flexibility there. Do you have an integration to the hypervisor to allow this today? Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. So you can, so either from the A10, I, I think what Drew's asking, I mean, is is either the 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 Thunder TPS or the Big Mon switch able to signal into the hypervisor to say spin up a new instance? That's something that we're working on. We don't have that in particular yet. Okay. Um, but that's definitely the goal, um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to to make this whole, you know, elastic mitigation system really work out. You know, we, we have to front it with the switch. In, in my opinion, anyway, we have to front it with the switch hardware. Um, use Big Mon to to, uh, to to send traffic only whenever we need to, and then scale out the more CPU intensive stuff. Um, and frankly, my, my, the, uh, my product does a lot more CPU intensive stuff. So you're absolutely right. We need to monitor it and, and such. 